Greetings and salutations. It's your man CD, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. Um, I wanna do a quick shout out to Carl and Anthony who are the leaders of the A to the K Wrestle Talk podcast. Um, you guys can watch that on YouTube, listen to it on Spotify, etc., etc. And um, I just wanna say I appreciate their support. The guys at AEW, we wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for fans like you guys. And I'm sure Carl and Anthony feel the same way about all of you that listen to A to the K Wrestle Talk. So um, keep listening to A, A to the K Wrestle Talk, you guys. Stay home, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you later. Um, are you happy to move on to the ringside report, Cal? Um, I'm trying my best to stay awake, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> we can do this. Um, right, so the ringside reports. Uh, hopefully a couple of interesting ones for you, Cal. Uh, so we had a, a tweet earlier this week from Zeb Coulter. Uh, or is it Dutch Mantel, I think, uh, is other alias. Um, and... There was a suggestion from him that um, WWE and the network could be being sold. Um, mm. And the suggestion being that it's to a combination of ESPN and Fox. I don't know how that would work logistically. And we've had no official announcements in any sense. Um, but yeah, how do you feel about the potential of WWE being sold? It seems like a really, I'd be very surprised if it happens myself. But uh, he reckons he's heard it from the WWE in some capacity or overheard it should I say rather than heard it directly do you know what I think since the whole Fox deal um, it's definitely something which has been kind of discussed as a potential thing um, but I mean I would be surprised if it was sold and like Vince had washed his hands of it or any, uh, with, uh, like anything like that I think if they do sell it it's probably just an ownership thing and Vince would still kind of stay on as a you know like a majority kind of shareholder or, or whatever to kind of steer mm. the ship but I I can't see it being sold to be fair yeah I don't know it just seems that the the possessive nature of Vince as we know him would it I don't know it'd feel weird him sort of letting go of any part of it really I know it's obviously it's a sharehold company anyway isn't it so it's not like he owns mm. all of it 100% anyway but um, I don't know it just feels kind of kind of a unusual step for McMahon, unless you say he's going to keep a majority of control over it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I mean, I think any deal that, that takes place would still kind of allow him and, you know, Steph and Triple H and whatever to kind of um, remain kind of in charge. Mm. But, yeah, I think it'd just be like, I mean, it's probably going to be sold to, you know, it's ultimately Disney, isn't it? You know, Disney owned Fox, they own ESPN, so it's ultimately yeah, that mouse, kind of network. The mouse owns so. it all. They own the world, so it would not <laughs> surprise me, to be fair. Um, but, yeah, interesting. Mm. Um, right, so the next one we have, apparently both the um, Money in the Bank matches, the men's and the women's, are going to take place at the same time. That's trippy as fuck if that's true. I know. I'm actually super intrigued as to how that would work. It sounds like the off- the headquarters are just going to be absolute chaos. Like, Well, I know there was a... Um, I know you mentioned last week, uh, was it uh, Corderas, like one of the old referees has basically come out and said something like um, they're, they're going with something a bit like trippy. Oh, yeah, he said, and... yeah, he said it's, he, he thinks that they may have made a mistake being too out there with it. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder whether it's something like this, like, you know, the fact that they are kind of climbing the stairs and trying to get onto the roof and stuff like that. But then also the point of like it taking place at the same time. I also heard a very, you know, I don't think there's any credibility to this whatsoever, but I heard a small rumour that one of them may potentially jump off the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. So, yeah, um, interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, whether it's going to end up being good or bad, it's definitely going to be a pay-per-view to be seen. It's um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be mm. one for the books. But, um, but, yeah, I don't know from a logistical point of view, and they've got time to, to sort of pre-film it, Fortunately, but from a logistical point of view, keeping track of both matches at the same time might be a bit chaotic. Um, <clears throat> but other than that, I'm intrigued to see how they handle it. Definitely uh, Oh, yeah. So the next one I've got, um, I, I refrain from mentioning this uh, when I was talking SmackDown, but uh, Jimmy Uso has evidently suffered a knee injury, which is going to see him out of, of action for up to nine months. Uh, could be less, but that is the reason for the absence of the Usos as of late. Uh, and the speculatively I'll be but the reason for the Forgotten Sons being pushed into that picture so they are, they are literally replacing the Usos um, which is why it still feels a bit paid by numbers but um, yeah seems like Jimmy's going to be out for a little bit um, right so next one is um, apparently the Florida guidelines are set to change um, 
pretty soon, actually. They've said they've cited it for being like May, possibly mid May, late May, maybe. But um, the potential being that the the performance center will potentially be able to allow twenty five percent of its normal capacity to attend to to keep the sort of distancing element of it, but still let fans attend. And this is not just for the PC. Obviously, this is um, any large large scale events arenas um so it will be a, a smaller audience but it looks like potentially in the next few weeks uh, we could see the wwe having have an actual audience members again it's gonna be weird that though because even like how did they stop people even from fucking queuing up or congregating outside do you know what I mean like it makes sense for dudes like distance them in terms of the seating but how do you keep people apart like just while fuck, trying to get in the building well, this is the thing, um, and this is the problem a lot of places are having when it comes to, like, you've got to let people shop, but it's a fucking nightmare. Um, so it'll take a lot of, like, they're going to have a lot more staff just trying to manage this shit. Um, so, and this is not an out-and-out thing saying WWE are going to do this. This is just the fact that the, the Florida guidelines are, are changing and they'll probably want to take advantage. Um, from what I mentioned last week, Vince was quite happy with a lot of the... Uh, the stuff they've been doing uh, in terms of like the, the pre-recorded stuff and, and you know, the, the more theatrical elements to it. So I don't even know if he's even that bothered about having the audience there again so soon um, from a logistical point, he might, might avoid it. So we've not heard from them that they're definitely going to have an audience from this date or anything, but um, we'll see. I mean, people obviously want to go and it's ticket sales, isn't it? So that there, there could be an element of it that they're like, well, yeah, we will. And, Maybe even an exclusivity to it, so they cost more because you can only get twenty five percent of them there. I don't know, um, but yeah, so that'll be uh, be one to see anyway. Um, next one I've got is AJ is uh, AJ Styles there for anyone in case you're confusing it with AJ Lee. Um, AJ is set to return to Raw next week, and uh, apparently he's going to be participating in the Money in the Bank in some capacity. So it'll be something to do with the pay per view, not necessarily the Money in the Bank match, unless he's going to replace Apollo. But um, we don't know what the capacity is for the pay-per-view, but this will be the first time we've seen him since that um, Boneyard match with The Undertaker. Do you think there's going to be anything to that, Carl? Do you think there's going to be any change in gimmick or maybe a face turn or anything like that? Um, I don't think so. Um, I think It'd be a bit weird to rock be... back off going, yeah, yeah, I got buried. <laughs> yeah, it's probably just going to be one of those things that gets forgotten about, but um, I do think with the whole Apollo storyline, it does seem like um, maybe AJ will be the one that replaces him. Yeah. I uh, I want him to come back and, and make some sort of joke about uh, this wouldn't be the first person to be buried in this company. <laughs> Just as a, you know, as a fun one. Um, the next one I've got, well, technically the next two, but um, we've had a couple more releases announced. Um, neither of them massive, to be honest. I mean, one of them is a bit of a shame, but, uh, well, for me, it's a bit of a shame. The other one I wasn't overly bothered with. But uh, we've had Cain Vasqu- Vasquez. I keep saying his Velasquez. last name. Velasquez. Uh, Cain Velasquez has been released, which I think is more of a surprise in the fact that he's not long been booked and he was meant to be a big draw because of obviously his, his UFC background. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, he's he's. Uh, I think he was actually had a big money contract with them as well, so it kind of makes sense to release him. Um, saves more money, doesn't it? Um, so we've had Cain go. Um, and the other one being Curtis Axel, which is the one I was a bit more upset with because it's like I've always mm-hmm. thought he had potential. I know he's getting on a bit in days now, but um, you know. He's probably not got the same charisma as his dad, but uh, there was there was something there, and it's a shame because he's been with the company for a long time. But he's he's also uh, gone now, so that's uh, that's the B team fucked. Yeah, I don't know. I think the Kane the Kane one was um, obviously they brought him in for Saudi, didn't they? And then they uh, didn't they have anything else for him after that. I think there was rumors of doing something with him at the Rumble that didn't really kind of, kind of come to fruition. Um, so yeah, it makes perfect sense I think I think you'll probably end up going back down to Mexico and carrying on that sense you know as UFC career is done so maybe you'll end up in like AAA or something like that um, yeah maybe so yeah, be a know, good fit for him to be fair yeah fair mm-hmm. play but then yeah obviously Curtis Axel is, is a shame you know perfect it was one of my favourite wrestlers of all time you know it's a shame to see his son kind of not make it I think you know, he had a few opportunities, but you kind of hit the nail on the head. It just doesn't really have the charisma, unfortunately, to get as far as not perfect. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, uh, it's a shame to see anyone, like, being released. And I still, I know I slightly harped on about it last week, but um, the fact that they're still keeping the likes of Lars Sullivan, who's injured and a racist, it's just crazy. Um, when you're getting rid of people who've just, they've grinded there for a long time, anything mm. you've thrown at them, they've done, even if it wasn't in the best interest for getting them over. But hey-ho, that's WWE's decisions for you. We'll never fully understand them. And um, the last one I've got, uh, just a, 
a minor note really is that um, from discussions, uh, Keith Lee is uh, apparently mentioned that he's struggling with um, the the empty arena elements of matches. It's it sort of it must be an unusual dynamic for most wrestlers, but he's he, no one's really said a lot. But he's he's actually mentioned that he's he's finding it really hard to to continue with the matches, uh, continue with the. I don't think enthusiasm is the way you put it, but you know that that sort of drive when there's not an audience to work to, and I can mm. fully understand that. To be fair, and, and I imagine a lot of wrestlers are feeling that way. Yeah, I mean, I don't think many of them even want to do it. You know, I think they're just kind of doing it because it's it's still going, and, and they want to kind of keep the spot if they can. Um, yeah, more than anything. But yeah, it's it's understandable. Yeah, totally. Uh, and unless you have any any others you want to bring to the table, Carl, that's it for the ringside report for me, mate. No, same. Pretty uh, slowish week, I think, in in terms of the uh, the news. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. It's bound to slow down a little bit though, because no one's going anywhere or doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. 